Here are your community updates brought to you by the Rapidian. Governor Gretchen Whitmer issued an executive order on Friday requiring Michiganders to wear face coverings in public indoor or crowded outdoor spaces or receive up to a $500 fine. The order toughens Whitmer's previous face covering mandate issued in April, which was limited to public indoor spaces and had no penalty for noncompliance. Effective on Monday at 12.01 a.m., willful violation of the new order is a misdemeanor with limited exceptions. The order follows a resurgence in new COVID-19 cases across Michigan, particularly in the Grand Rapids and Lansing regions. A statement from Whitmer's office said research confirms the reason behind this is a spotty compliance with her previous face covering mandate. Quote, masks can reduce the chance of spreading COVID-19 by about 70%, Whitmer said. Continuing, quote, by wearing masks, we can save lives and protect our family, friends, and neighbors from the spread of COVID-19, end quote. The order requires any business that's open to the public to refuse entry or service to people who are refusing to wear face coverings. Exceptions are those younger than five years old, those medically unable to tolerate face coverings, and those who are eating or drinking while seated at a food service establishment. Other exceptions to the governor's order include people temporarily removing face coverings for exercise, necessary personal services, identification, communication with those with hearing impairments, public safety roles, religious services, and giving a speech for broadcast or an audience. Quote, it's important that all Michiganders wear masks properly, not down around the neck, not only over the mouth, but correctly over the mouth and nose, said Dr. Jonay Caldoun, Michigan Department of Health and Human Services Chief Medical Executive and Chief Deputy Director for Health. For more information or to read the full executive order, you can visit Whitmer's official website, www.michigan.gov slash Whitmer. Confirming its plans for the fall semester, Grand Rapids Community College announced on Tuesday it will offer a mix of online and on-campus learning options for students. GRCC's fall semester classes will begin on August 31st, with the COVID-19 crisis dictating the options laid out. The fall learning options are online classes, which are entirely online with no set meeting times, and ideal for people who work well independently or who need a flexible schedule. Hybrid classes, which are mostly online with limited meetings on campus. Virtual classes, which meet online at specific times using programs such as Zoom, allowing students to interact with faculty and classmates in real time. And on-campus classes, which are meeting on campus at specific times with proper social distancing and safety protocols. Quote, this will be a different type of semester and we might need to continue making changes, but we will not sacrifice quality or safety, GRCC President Bill Pink said in a statement. To ensure the safety of students, faculty, and staff returning in person in the fall, the college developed a series of protocols and physical changes among them are requiring students and staff to complete an online health screening before returning, requiring face coverings, limiting classroom sizes, and installing hand sanitization stations across its campuses. GRCC also recently announced the waiving of online class fees during the 2020-2021 school year. The move aims to keep its classes as affordable as possible for students while enduring the pandemic. More details about GRCC's fall semester plans are available on its website, www.grcc.edu. Work began this past week on a new outdoor mural project in downtown Grand Rapids, honoring local women leaders in Grand Rapids history. The project is called Women's Way and is turning overlooked alleyways in the downtown area into murals of the women leaders painted by local artists. It's organized by Downtown Grand Rapids, Inc., the City of Grand Rapids, the Grand Rapids Women's History Council, and numerous area businesses. The first four murals being painted in the project are of Harriet Woods Hill, Ethel Coe, Angeline Kelsey Na Keo Se Yobe, and the Grand Rapids Chicks 1945 All-American Baseball Team. 
The currently nameless alleyways also will be officially named and marked with commemorative street signage in honor of the women leaders highlighted at each space. Quote, this is an intentional gesture that aims to call attention to the fact that women's names relative to men's are not often assigned to public and private buildings and property, DGRI said in a statement. The project acknowledges the complicated history of women in alleyways and helps to aim positive ownership of those public spaces. Improvements of the alleyways down the road will include movable furniture for seating, planters, lighting, a biographical plaque about each woman, and periodic pop-up programming to further activate the spaces. More details about the historic local women and the artists painting them are available on the DGRI's website, www.downtowngr.org. And as always, the Rapidian encourages local residents to share your own stories and perspectives on the Rapidian's platform. To learn more or to get started as a community reporter yourself, you can visit www.therapidian.org slash write. This message is brought to you by the Rapidian, GRTV, and the Grand Rapids Community Media Center. We'll see you soon.